Hello, I'm Hugh Strachan, the author of the book First World War. I was born in Indenburg in 1949 and was educated at Corpus Christi College in Cambridge. Upon realizing my love for military history, I decided to begin my journey as an author. I have published many books, but my book on the First World War is truly a gift. This book dives into the misfortunes and triumphs that essentially shaped the world as we know it. Imagine a war-torn battlefield stacked with smoking bodies and large explosions, going days without eating, clenching your weapon close to your chest and worrying that any minute may very well be your last. These were real concerns that millions of people who died in World War I faced. World War I began on July 28, 1914, and lasted until November 11, 1918. Differences in foreign policies were to blame, although the immediate cause was the assassination of Austria's Archduke Ferdinand. The Allied powers included France, Great Britain, Russia, the United States, and others. The Central powers included Germany, the Ottoman Empire, and Austro-Hungary. In total, 30 countries were involved in the conflict. Italy, once part of the uh, uh, the Triple Alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary also fought on side of the Allies. Soldiers fought largely in trenches during the war and thousands suffered from stress known as shell shock. The British and French trenches were now often ruins, whereas the German trenches were almost luxurious in comparison with bunks and decent cooking facilities. By the end of World War I, over 9 million soldiers had been killed and another 21 million wounded. Over a million soldiers were killed in the infamous Battle of Somme alone, including about 30,000 in just one day. Imagine every three seconds a body dropping next to you. These conditions were horrendous for soldiers to face. During World War I, dogs were used to carry messages and capsules strapped to their bodies. Dogs also carried and placed telegraph wires in important areas. Pigeons were also used during the war. About 500,000 were re regularly dropped into enemy lines by parachute and then sent back with messages. On Christmas Eve of 1914, both sides declared an unofficial truce and sang Christmas carols to each other and played football matches in no man's land, the area between the German and British trenches. And German and British soldiers exchanged food, souvenirs, the ceasefire was known as the Christmas Truce. The following Christmas, centuries of both sides had ordered to shoot any soldier who did this. Cannons and artillery were often extremely loud. The explosives used to destroy a bridge in France could be heard over 130 miles away in London. Many new weapons were being invented or first being used in World War I. Big Bertha was one of the most famous weapons of all. It has a 48-ton gun capable of firing a shell over 9 miles. It took 200 men and several hours to assemble the gun. The newfound sophistication of technology along with the innovation of war tactics provided for a very bloody, very long war. Many people are aware of World War I and who was included in it, but many people do not actually know why and how it happened. This book provides a wonderful recap of the First World War, which is a very important part of our history. In reading it, I hope to provide people with a thirst of knowledge and the ability to learn more about this world-changing event. It is through history that we learn to correct our mistakes, and with this book, I believe I can get people to see how bad war truly is. A Third World War would be, would be, has the potential to be catastrophic due to be even more updated technology, including nuclear weapons. The death toll has the potential to be in the hundreds of millions. War is never a good thing, and my book is meant to highlight this specific and realistic point through hard facts and research. Thank you for listening to my summary of the First World War. Have a wonderful evening.